My name is Mihika Gangoli, and I'll be presenting today about our group's ongoing efforts to use neuroimaging to better understand cortical spreading depression. I have no financial disclosures or conflicts of interest to report with regards to the work that I'll be presenting today. This work was supported by the Center for Neuroscience and Regenerative Medicine, and all imaging data was collected for the healthy participants at the NIH Clinical Center. I would like to thank everyone who has contributed to this work, both at the CNRM and at the NIH, for their feedback and helpful discussion. At the CNRM, we are interested in the improved treatment and recovery of military service members following traumatic brain injury. Specifically, I am interested in post-traumatic headache, which is one of the most common symptoms that occurs in the chronic phases following concussive type TBI in both military and civilian populations. Post-traumatic headaches can be subclassified into a number of categories, but the most prevalent type of PTH has been found to be migraine, which has been reported to have the most impact in terms of severity and frequency extending beyond three months following the reported TBI. In a subset of post-traumatic migraine, the pain of the migraine is preceded by an aura, which in a recent study of military service members showed increased incidence in the PTH cohort. The aura symptoms usually consist of temporary deficits in the visual, sensory, speech, or motor domains and last between five and 30 minutes. Studies monitoring aura symptoms have been performed since the 1940s when Carl Lashley performed a study tracking his own visual auras. His tracking experiments of the scotoma boundaries showed that they progressed across his field of vision at a rate of three to six millimeters per minute. There have been documented studies of patients tracking their own aura since then, which have produced results consistent with Lashley's observations. The rate of progression of the visual aura symptoms has been the basis for the hypothesis that the underlying neurophysiological basis of migraine aura is an event known as cortical spreading depolarization, or CSD. CSDs have been directly measured in patients following severe neurological insults using electrocorticography, or ECOG, which records electrical activity across the cortical surface. In 80 to 90 percent of patients suffering from ischemic stroke and 50 to 60 percent of patients suffering from moderate to severe TBI, ECOG has shown that depression of the high frequency electrical activity is also accompanied by a depolarization or downward shift in the lower frequencies of the ECOG channels, both of which propagate across channels at a rate of three to six millimeters per minute. However, the electrical activity of CSDs have only been measured in humans using ECOG, which is highly invasive and not suitable for migraine patients. Moreover, ECOG does not allow us to fully study the scope of CSD trajectory because it only provides measurement in two dimensions. An imaging method with optimized temporal resolution to detect transient alterations in signal would be highly beneficial to patients suffering from migraine with aura because it is a non-invasive method that would allow us to monitor and localize the CSD source in 3D. Diffusion MRI is one such proposed method to non-invasively study CSDs because of its ability to measure microstructural alterations in brain tissue. During the mass neuronal depolarization of a CSD, an ionic imbalance causes water to move into the neurons, causing them to swell and reducing the surrounding extracellular space. This reduction in extracellular space results in increased restriction of water molecular motion, thereby reducing the tissue diffusivity or the ability of water to move in space. By applying diffusion-weighted MR gradients in three mutually orthogonal directions, we can measure the average net change in water displacement and use the associated reduction in diffusivity as a metric of cellular swelling in gray matter. Diffusion methods have been used in this way to sensitively diagnose ischemic stroke lesions that are typically not visible on T2-weighted scans. By applying these diffusion-sensitized gradients, we can see a bright core on the diffusion-weighted image indicating the increase in restricted diffusion corresponding to a dark lesion on the corresponding uh, apparent diffusion coefficient map, or ADC map, indicating a reduction in water diffusivity. In these cases, the lesions are often long-lasting and remain present throughout the imaging time course. We have to ask the question of whether transient diffusion changes consistent with CSD-related neuronal swelling 
can be detected using diffusion MRI. Following the sign of work, dynamic diffusion MRI studies have been performed in animal models of triggered CSD. These experiments have consisted of initiating a CSD followed by acquiring data across one triplet of three mutually orthogonal diffusion-weighted directions and continually repeating this acquisition to provide a time series of ADC maps. These experiments have shown a transient region of reduced ADC that starts near the CSD source triggered using a stimulus. The region of reduced ADC propagates at a characteristic rate of three to six millimeters per minute as CSD and moves across the cortex without crossing into white matter or crossing between hemispheres. Moreover, when looking at the average ADC across all of the repeated triplets, the transient ADC changes extend beyond the lesion of the stroke indicated by the average ADC. These animal experiments have shown that the propagating region of temporarily reduced ADC corresponds with regions where high frequency electrical activity is reduced, indicating that the dynamic diffusion changes are indicative of CSD electrical activity. Unfortunately, when these dynamic diffusion methods have been tested in patient populations where CSD incidence is relatively high, such as stroke, the transient reduction in ADC has yet to be observed. This could be for a couple of reasons. First is the fundamental challenge of performing the dynamic immune study during the time frame when the CSD is occurring, particularly in a clinical setting where dynamic diffusion MRI may not necessarily be a priority. The imaging time investment of these studies may be challenging to justify if the sole output of the dynamic diffusion scan that occurs is in the absence of a CSD. The second reason is that wave propagation of CSD in the human brain is most likely more complex than in previous animal studies that involve mice and rats due to the highly folded gyroencephalic structure of the human cortex. We hope to address these concerns to then answer the question of whether the CSD underlying migraine aura can be detected and localized by applying dynamic diffusion MRI methods in humans. Our first objective was to address the concern of being able to capture transient CSD-related diffusion changes in the most efficient way possible. While dynamic diffusion scans are not always a priority, data collection for diffusion tensor imaging, or DTI, is becoming more common. DTI requires collection of data across an increased number of diffusion-weighted directions in order to adequately estimate a tensor and associated metrics such as fractional anisotropy, axial and radial diffusivity, and fiber tract orientation. In clinical settings where data across multiple directions is already being collected, we asked the question of whether it would be possible to arrange these diffusion-weighted directions in such a way that would, they would still optimally cover a spherical shell but would consist of sequential sets of mutually orthogonal triplets to allow for the calculation of dynamic measurements of ADC. Since the 30 direction DTI is more commonly used now in clinical scanners, we used a code written in Mathematica to numerically compute a solution for a 30 direction nested cubes DTI vector set. This was done by distributing 30 directions optimally across a sphere, arranging these vectors so that they would have maximal distance between each other, similar to electrons distributed across a spherical shell. We also added a further constraint that the vector set would consist only of triplets of mutually orthogonal directions. This diffusion vector configuration now allows us to collect data for one 30 direction DTI and 10 time points of dynamic trace in one acquisition. We refer to this gradient table as a nested cubes diffusion scheme. We acquired diffusion data using the nested cubes gradient table and compared the resulting tensor-based metrics with those from a standard 30 direction DTI table. The two acquisition schemes show minimal root mean squared error, as well as high agreement and tensor-based tract orientation when looking at tensor-based metrics in the majority of white matter voxels. Similarly, in gray matter voxels, uh, metrics of diffusivity such as mean diffusivity, radial diffusivity, and axial diffusivity are very comparable with minimal root mean squared error in both gray matter and white matter voxels. We next move to address the second challenge of imaging CSD in the human brain by developing a MATLAB-based computational simulation of wave propagation in the gyroencephalic human cortex to better understand how transient changes in image-based measures 
would be seen on dynamic scans during the CSD event. We assume that the wavefront propagated across a free surfer generated cortical surface. A user defined source of faces was selected to be initially active. Wave propagation was modeled using the fast marching method where faces were iteratively selected for activation based on the cost function of nearest neighbor distance. That was minimized. We also assumed that the faces would only be able to act be activated once. The simulation allows the user to select a propagation rate, the duration that the faces will remain active for, and the type of activation function. Here, I have generated a 20-minute simulated CSD propagation where the source is in the visual cortex. The propagation is a step with 60-second duration. The wave is shown to propagate across the folded cortex, which does appear to affect the smooth trajectory previously observed in listed cephalic animals. On the inflated surface corresponding to um, the folded gerencephalic surface, we can see that there are no discontinuities in the propagation wavefront and that the irregular wavefront is further emphasized, particularly as the each uh, wave iteration of the propagation encounters sulcal regions. We were then able to apply the CSD simulation to diffusion data acquired in healthy volunteers. Free Surfer was used to generate the cortical surface and the simulation propagation path was computed in MATLAB. The surface-based map was converted to voxel space. In parallel, the diffusion MRI data was collected for motion and distortion using a T2-weighted reference image in tortoise, and baseline measurements of temporal diffusivity were estimated. Finally, the voxel-based CSD map was registered to the dynamic diffusion images. Reductions in ADC were applied to voxels at user-selected levels that were, there in, that were within the propagating wavefront to generate simulated diffusion alterations that corresponded with a simulated CSD path. We implemented this workflow to determine the level of signal change that could be detected using a nested cubes dynamic diffusion-based approach. We simulated a, C a CSD wave propagating across the cortical surface and applied the wave trajectory to 20 minutes of real diffusion data acquired from a healthy volunteer using the nested cubes gradient table. Reductions in ADC ranging between 15 and 35% can be visualized on the dynamic maps as a corresponding transient increase in isotropic diffusion and as a region of increased standard deviation on each level of simulated um, reduction in ADC that follows the wave trajectory. You can also use the simulation work to show the value of implementing dynamic diffusion in a context where there may not be a clearly visible static lesion, which is less likely the case for patients suffering from migraine with aura. In our simulation, the transient alterations are visible on the dynamic maps of isotropic diffusion over the course of 20 minutes of imaging. However, when we study the temporarily average maps, there's no sign of signal alteration, despite the higher signal to noise ratio because of increased average scan time. This emphasizes the importance of using dynamic imaging to catch transient events that may otherwise go undetected, particularly without a static lesion that evolves over the course of hours to days, rather than the course of minutes in the matter of CSD temporal evolution. In summary, we are proposing to address the challenges of acquiring neuroimaging data to study CSD on two fronts. We are addressing the challenge of imaging a transient event by using a nested cubes gradient table to perform a two-in-one acquisition for DTI and dynamic diffusion MRI. Our simulation methods can be used to model wave propagation in the human brain and can be used to determine optimal imaging parameters to acquire imaging data. We plan to implement our image acquisition and analysis methods in both animal models and in humans during CSD occurrences in cases ranging from severe neurological insults to trigger migraine aura. Thank you.